I welcome Peter. Yes. Peter's first church to the center. And the second church is First Baptist of Sunrise. <laughs> In our difficulties this morning, Peter has bailed us out with sound. We are not yet completed. We have not yet arrived. We are still under construction. But by next week, we hope that some will be. We ran into certain difficulties, but I've been assured by Peter uh, that come Sunday, we will be up and running. Thank you. Thank you. What the devil didn't know, that sound could not hinder us. So whether or not we would be here today, and the Lord has been good to us. Yes. Today I felt like the saints of yesterday. We too can say, hitherto as the Lord brought us. Should we celebrate because of who God is and what God has done for us? You see, He has brought us from a mighty wrong way. And we have all rights to celebrate. In giving thanks today, I commend you. And all who have labored so diligently, who have sacrificed in the accomplishment of this day. Yes, from there and far you have joined in the task of building. And though not yet complete, God has brought us to this point of celebration and you give him thanks. Could I say that your sweat and your blood have not been in vain? And by reason, of the challenges we face thus far. There was time, no doubt, that you felt that you were at your weekend. We couldn't go on. We couldn't make it. But you know, until we realize that that which God started, he will complete. And it doesn't matter the weather condition. He will see us through. It is said that when we come to the end of our rope, tie a knot and hang on. Because if you can stand the pull, God will we look forward to the completion of what is not yet completed and the date of dedication will be made known so that we can plan for that in the meantime however let us not lose sight of the fact of that which God has placed us here to do. Let us continue to live in his vineyard. Let us be diligent. 
Let us be faithful because there is work to be done. There is work to be done, and by the grace of God, it is first Sunday, and we don't want to keep you unduly long, although I know you don't mind, especially when we don't have any clap. <laughs> However, when the onset of the new year, we have been considering as our theme the God of good news, and I thought we should continue that thing because indeed He is good. Today we will continue by looking to the good news of God's great love. The good news of God's great love. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles to John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are, what you have done for us. We thank you for your love. And as we look to your words now, Lord, we ask, that you expand our understanding and comprehension. Cause your light to brighten for the path. Speak to our hearts, give us listening ears, understanding hearts, and obedience. Dear, speak to us now, Lord, as we patiently wait before thee. In Jesus' name. Amen. John 3.16 is the Bible in a verse. Brief and to the point. In this verse, Jesus revealed God's great love. Here we have the fact of his love. God so loved. We have the evidence of his love. God gave. We have the purpose of his love to save. Yes, this is the story of the Bible. God loves us. Now today with the help of the Holy Spirit, let each of us examine John 3.16. And let us relate our heart and life to the greatest news about God. That a human ear can never hear. The greatest news. You see, by confronting the good news of John 3.16, we may discover our personal worth. Now to the football coach, a member of the team may be worth five yards. And to the employer, a clerk may be worth four hundred dollars a week. To our child, you may be worth the price of the toys you bring home from time to time. But thanks be to God. To God we are worth everything. Everything. The, the Bible says, And what will a man profit though he gave the whole world 
and of his soul to God we are value in them. Is that uh, uh, the purpose for the good news we had? By studying our texts, we become informed concerning the high cost of our wonderful salvation from sin. Salvation from sin is a free gift of God to those who will receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes, salvation we cannot purchase. We cannot merit it with a life of moral excellence. However, Its freeness to us does not mean that it did not cost God. As a matter of fact, it cost heaven's best when he sent his only begotten son to die for you and for me. This is good news, dear ones. Let us confront the good news in our texts in order that we may discover that there is hope for us as we face tomorrow. You see, not only has God loved us in the past, but the scripture teaches us that nothing in the past, nothing in the past, in the present, or the future that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is how Paul puts it to the Romans. God loves us because it is his nature to love, not because of what we have done or what he stands to gain from us. It is God's nature to love. For God so love. There was his love for us in the future will not be determined by how lovable we are. You see, we can face the future without any fear of the possibility of the withdrawal of divine love from us. Paul says, nothing shall separate us. He loves us with all of our faults, dear ones. Someone says, God loves the sinner although he hates the sin. I know true. You see, he is not willing that any should perish. In the good news of our text, we may find an explanation for some of the mysteries of life. Yes, we may. And bear in mind, the disciples of our Lord could not even begin to comprehend why Christ was going to die. To be candid, they were incapable of comprehending the full extent of God's love for them. You know that there are many things that cannot be understood at the moment. You see, as some of these things happen because God loves us. God's love is at work. And we will be able to understand, according to Paul, 
these mysteries. Only after a while. Did I put that right? Even as a perspective of history, you know, we talk about the wonders and the splendors, the completeness and beauty of 2020 hindsight. But in the events you didn't see it. It is only after looking back that you understand. Yes, it was the hand of God at work. It was the grace of God that has brought us this far. Although I could not understand in the moment. There was the good news of John 3.16 reveals the reason for our being and the purpose for our lives. God has poured out his love in order that through us he might love others. Isn't that marvelous? God has poured out his love in order that through us he might reach others. He wants us to be the conduit through which his love for others may be manifested. You see, as his emissaries are ambassadors, we represent him in order, in order to others by sharing his love. So, to us, as the disciples, Christ is saying, go forth with the good news. Spread the message far and wide. Not only in Jerusalem, but in Samaria. And into the uttermost part. By our lives, we are to be carrying Christ to impact those we touch. Oh, that we may so live that Christ be seen in us. That's the purpose of life, you know. It is for this purpose that we are called there once. The good news about God contained in the text explains the reason for the existence of the church in the world today. Did you notice that? You see, God continues to love the world. God continues to seek sinful people that he might save them from their sin. He is doing this through his church. Because the church is the chosen instrument of the proclamation of the good news, you see. The church deserves our love and loyalty. As a matter of fact, did I say the church? I speak of the church as if it is the building. No, the church is not Christ. In us, which a really dear one is the hope of tomorrow. We are reminded that our investment in the church is an investment in the kingdom of God. The proclamation of the good news, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Yes, God so loved that he gave. And we who have received of God are obligated to share because of such is our commission. Peter says, Christ, if you love me, feed my sheep. Peter, if you love me, feed my love. My friends, the measure of God's great love concerns us. God has shown his concern through speech. You know, from Mount Sinai, God echoed his love through speech and wonders with which he perpetuated 
through his prophets and angels, and now his son. Why? Because from the beginning of time, it was not God's will that any should perish. God has shown his concern through his actions in history. God chose Israel as an as his instrument of salvation. God has been patient with Israel in spite of Israel's unfaithfulness because he is not willing that any should perish. It is the manifestation of God's love to us, dear ones, so that we be not perish. God, God's command to the prophet Jonah illustrate his concern for a lost world. God's discipline of Jonah reveals his determination to deal redemptively with a lost world. Yes, this is good news. God has shown his concern through the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. Having experienced the compassion of Christ, John declared that God is love. God is love. You see, God has shown his concern through the suffering of his son on the cross who died in our place so that we may live. This is the essence of the gospel story in the room. He has shown the good news of his love for us and through the suffering of his fatherly heart. And it was all for our sake. As a matter of fact, God has shown his concern for us through his patience. You know, he's still waiting for some to return from the far country, like the prodigal. Yeah. Let me say that the prodigal, the parable that is often called the parable of the prodigal son, is actually the parable of the waiting father. The prominent person in the parable is not the son who went astray. It's the father who waited with longing heart to welcome the wayward son home. God is still waiting the return of prodigal sons and daughters. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should be saved. I wonder, is there really a prodigal here today? God waits for you. Would you come home? There is another aspect of the passage that I would like to reflect on, though briefly. And it's the measure of Christ's concern for us. It's not only the Father, but the Son. The concern can be seen in his perfect self-forgetfulness. His perfect self-forgetfulness. His selflessness. You see, he who knew no sin took upon himself the sin of us all so that he could save us. His love concern can be seen in his perfect humility as he went about his task. 
the Lord became a servant so as to be our example. How could you comprehend that? The Creator become the created. To his disciples, you do not understand what I do now, though I wash your feet. But you see, I came not to be served, but to serve. This is the mighty almighty that Isaiah speak of. How can we begin to understand the Son of Man came to serve, not to be served, so that he could become not only our Savior, but an example for us? My friends, Christ's loving concern can be seen in his attitude of forgiveness toward those who nail him to the cross. Can you imagine? I heard that someone said something nasty about me and I will not forgive that one. Huh? That's not a part of the nature or character of the child of God. Because we who are in him must be like him. Because we will be forgiven to the degree to which we forgive. That is what Matthew 6 says. Christ revealed the measure of his concern by his persistent effort to save the very worst of people. Paul believed in them that he was the worst of sinners. Little did he know that there are many worse than him. But God, through his son, is reaching out because he is not willing that any should. This is the good news, my friends. This is something to rejoice about. Christ revealed the measure of his concern by his persistent habit of always seeing the best in others. The best in others. Let me remind you, this is not an art. This is Christ's nature. Because not until he reigns within, before we can be transported out of ourselves to see the good and the best in others rather than the worst. Oh, Christ came to save the worst of us. The worst of us. Still, not willing that any should. God's great concern for us was greater than his concern for the comfort of his son. God was willing to suffer and to sacrifice in order that he might save us from the ravages of sin. God's concern for a lost world should move us as his children today to engage in evangelistic missionary activities, demonstrating our concern for the lost. That's the purpose of our calling. That's the nature of our mission. John the Apostle put it very forcefully. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us that we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That's what John says, the first John 3 16. As he to us, so must we to others. 
The only way by which we can be absolutely certain that we are the children of God is to discover within us a concern similar to that which God had for us. We can know that we have passed from spiritual death into spiritual life and that we are indeed the children of God if we find the love in our hearts for others. That's how John, 1 John 3, 14 puts it, you know. If we can discover within our hearts a passionate concern that expresses itself in ministries of loving, helpfulness toward the unfortunate, then it is the Spirit of God at work within our hearts. That's the purpose of the church. And that's the nature of our calling. We all just discover the measure of God's great love for them through your love, through our love, for those about us. Am I ready? a channel or a conduit in the hand of God in reaching others for God? It will be exceedingly difficult for us to give an effective witness to the love of God unless we let God's love express itself through us in ministry to those who are in need in the world today. God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that if you believe in him you will not perish. He has made it possible for you to have everlasting life. Put yourself right in the middle of the good news they want. The good news after this great verse from the Word of God. Respond with full faith in the Christ who came and lived and died for your sins. Yes, you can have eternal life through Him today. If you have not already received this precious gift from God, you can today. It was John Dwyer who says, A man may go to heaven without wealth, without riches, without honor, without learning, without friends. But he can never go there without Christ. And David Lloyd says, you cannot receive Christ in bits and pieces. You cannot be partially saved. Either you are saved or you are not saved. Dear ones, as I conclude today, let me say that this day you can step out of that zone of uncertainty and embrace Christ publicly as your Lord and Savior. You can love him enough to publicly acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior. Remember what Jesus says. He said to those around him, If you are ashamed to own me before men, then I too will be ashamed 
to own you in the presence of my Father and the angel. Oh, my friend, that we know him to be dead to wear us. We have lost our identity and become identified in him. That Christ and Christ alone may be seen in me. May God help us that as we respond to this precious the wonderful birth for God so loved the world. He gave his son for me. For you, for you, for you, and for me. Would you bow your heads both? I wonder if there is one here in our midst.